Welcome to segment three of the CME program, Investigator Insights in HCV. The topic discussion is HCV, HIV, co-infection, risks, and treatment options. During segment three, we're going to discuss emerging thera therapeutic options for the HCV, HIV co-infected patient. Daniel, uh, there are many studies ongoing now investigating emerging therapies, therapies with newer direct acting antiviral agents in the HCV, HIV co-infection. One of them is a study still using pegylated interferon and ribavirin. It's a study using PEG, ribavirin, and another so-called second generation protease inhibitor, faldaprevir. Do you want to comment on that uh, study so far? Again, it's ongoing. Preliminary results have been released. We don't have a final answer. But uh, discuss for the audience a little bit about how that trial set up and what findings we've had to date. Yeah, so faldaprevir is uh, particularly attractive as a protease inhibitor against hepatitis C because it doesn't have as many drug-drug interactions as the others that have come before it. Um, and so I like it for that reason right up front, that you can, uh, and in the, in, the, in the study that was done, it was allowed patients on darunavir, which had not been, even with telaprevir, it was not useful, and also had azanavir, you could use it with efavirin. So really many of our favorite HIV antiretrovirals can, can be used. It's a single pill once a day. It doesn't seem to have much of a safety signal, um, but the study in HIV-infected patients is done with the long courses of interferon and ribavirin. It's response-guided. If you did well, you could get 24 weeks. Uh, otherwise, if, uh, 48 weeks. Most patients, actually, 80-plus percent could get 24 weeks, and the, and the overall SVR rate was about 74 percent in the preliminary, which was fairly close to their HIV-uninfected studies so far of about 80 percent. So once again, the potent drug does pretty much as well um, in patients with HIV infection is not. With, though, the um, interferon-free, perhaps even already here, uh, what I can see this drug's role would be is that, since we just talked about Cosmos in the previous section, the Cosmos study with sofosbuvir and semeprevir, semeprevir can be used with such few uh, of our antiretrovirals, feldaprevir, many more. Perhaps this would be a nice combination. Um, this completely unstudied, but one wonders whether that would be a nice replacement to be able to use that drug. Uh, so I think that, that that's how I'm thinking about it. So, so that's excellent. So this combination may be available by the end of 2014. Uh, you know, uh, there has been no filing yet, so it's always difficult to know when the medication will be out, but maybe by the end of 14, early 15. So uh, I expect, uh, you know, PEG, RIBA, and feldaprevir, feldaprevir to be available, not only for the co-infected population, but uh, for the HCV mono-infected patient as well, genotype one only. Now, what about emerging therapies in the interferon-free realm, uh, what we're really excited about? Uh, we discussed in a prior segment the use of semeprevir and sofosbuvir in an interferon-free regimen for genotype one patients already, um, off-label at this time. Uh, we discussed the fact that in genotypes two and three that we already have interferon-free regimens that are effective, but more regimens are being, uh, are being performed right now, even as we speak. Uh, there are regimens uh, from uh, Gilead that are investigating uh, sofosbuvir and an NS5A inhibitor, Ladipasvir. There are regimens from AbbVie looking at uh, a protease inhibitor, an NS5A inhibitor, a non-nucleoside polymerase inhibitor, and ribavirin. Uh, there are regimens from Bristol-Myers looking at a protease inhibitor, an NS5A inhibitor, and a non-nucleoside polymerase inhibitor. Uh, and then there are other companies as well that are a little bit further behind but are investigating other interferon-free regimens. Um, some of the data has been released mostly by press release more even than at meetings to date because the uh, rapidity of the progress of these trials is so great now that they can't even wait until the meetings to disclose the information. But why don't you talk a little bit about some of the early results in the HCV mono-infected patients of some of these interferon-free regimens? Yeah, it's a dizzying array. And so our job 
here today is not to dizzy everybody with it, but actually to, to bring something that we think would be coherent. So what I'd like to do is, is uh, focus on a couple things in categories. The first is, uh, you mentioned really a new drug class that hasn't yet been released, the, the NS5A replication complex inhibitors. And I think those are particularly interesting and exciting for patients with HIV infection because they also offer few drug-drug interactions or ones that can be dealt with some, with, with medication, uh, with dosing uh, changes. And the other advantage is they seem to be um, independent of genotype as well. And so the two uh, that you mentioned, lodiposphere, which is the Gilead uh, drug, and decladosphere, uh, which is the Bristol-Myers Squibb drug that was out a little bit sooner, both paired with sofosbuvir. And so we have data on those actually presented for some meetings, and this looks great. With or without rivavirin, again, rivavirin seems to almost already be going away sooner, I think, than many of us expected. We figured that would be the one that's going to hang on for a few years. So in a small study that was really exciting, presented at the last liver meeting, American liver meeting, um, of decladosphere and sofosbuvir. We took people who had failed a protease inhibitor treatment. So you can imagine these were the most resistant to treatment that we've had if it didn't work with the protease inhibitor in addition to PEGRA, the hep C protease inhibitor. And basically cured, as I remember, 41 patients. And none of them were, had cirrhosis, but nonetheless, you know, people who had failed badly, this was an amazing result. So there were no virological failures in that. Super. Um, this uh, drug, declasphere, seems to also have really great activity against Geno2 and Geno3, uh, especially Geno3, which we're a little bit worried about. Um, you know, it's a, perhaps a slight weakness in sofosbuvir, and so this will be great. Uh, Lodiposphere, uh, a drug that Gilead is actually co-formulating, and now we have studies coming out it, that will be enrolling anytime soon now for HIV-infected patients of a co-formulation of sofosbuvir and lodiposphere with or without ribavirin in HIV-infected patients. So this is going to be great, even one fewer pill um, once a day. And so there are pretty good data in HIV uninfected patients, really a fair number of patients, looking at 12-week regimens, 24-week regimens, and even an eight-week regimen. So you had people who were naive to treatment with genotype 1. They got eight weeks of this uh, with or without rivar, 94% SVR rate. So this is really astonishing. 12 weeks may be a little better. 24 weeks uh, is probably not better. Um, although, I'd be careful with that because, again, these are pretty usually healthy clinical trials patients. So really what we're interested in, the tough ones are going to be the cirrhotic. So prior treatment experience doesn't seem to matter that much. But prior null response interferon, rivavirin, and cirrhotics, those are our toughest ones. And so those are the ones who maybe we're going to be, we're going to be seeing a 24-week dual or perhaps triple therapy, but this seems to be this combination of the NS5 and NS5A uh, uh, and B, at least sofosbuvir in one of these two drugs, super. Well, the, the Gilead studies are called the ION trials, and as you mentioned, there are three of them that are ongoing right now, and they, again, have released uh, the latest information in press release form, um, and as you mentioned, treatment naive and treatment experienced patients were included in, in in different ones of the ION trials, and they did have cirrhotic patients in, uh, in two of the three ION trials. Uh, and again, uh, genotype one, these trials were. Um, unbelievable results. There wasn't a single arm that had less than a 93% SVR, and uh, some of them were 99. So very well tolerated and excellent, excellent results. Uh, when, when is this particular combination expected? Do you have any insight into that? Well, Gillen says they're going to file in the first quarter, which is when we're speaking. Uh, so, you know, we, this time in 2015, uh, early 2015, so soon. Yes, exactly. And as you mentioned, uh, one of the exciting things is for the HCV HIV co-infected patient population that they are actually starting studies now. They're not waiting until the approval of the product and then starting uh, tedious, laborious studies. They're actually starting the studies now, so the expectation is uh, we will have information on the regimen safety and efficacy in this population uh, very, very soon. And what about drug-drug interactions with these medications? Any information on that, Daniel? Yeah, I mean, what we know, it's really, it's really pretty great. There, are, there will require some 
uh, uh, modification. It's still not completely known, but basically we will be able to use them with antiretrovirals. You might adjust uh, the, the cladosphere dose a little bit, but the ladivosphere, you're going to use a single tablet regimen, and, and uh, so far it looks like it's going to be simple. Now, AbV uh, also has regimens that I alluded to earlier that have uh, that are in phase three trials again in the mono infected po population and we do have press release data there too uh, but why don't you comp uh, comment a little bit about uh, some of the differences in the in the abvi regimen compared to the one you just discussed yeah so abvi interestingly enough because they own the uh, 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 ritonavir have been using a prote their protease inhibitor boosted with with ritonavir a very familiar drug but we have very little information on the drug-drug interactions from the Abbott drugs. We have a non-nuke, don't know much about that, uh, the Proteus inhibitor. And so while they have very impressive result in this sort of quad regimen, and they're gonna co-formulate ribavirin and try to make things easier so that it's not a tons of tablets, it's still a twice-a-day regimen because the, the non-nuke is a twice-a-day drug. Uh, and, but for 12 weeks in, in genotype one, they're looking at a 96% clinical trial, 96% SBR rate, so fantastic result. But my guess is this is not going to be very useful in our HIV-infected patients uh, with the drug-drug interactions that they really, and they haven't, to my knowledge, uh, started any study with those. So I think once, if it hasn't started, I think it's very soon forthcoming. Yeah. So they're, you know, they're an HIV company, as you mentioned, or yeah. they have in the past been, and I think they, they're very interested in this population, which is good. Mm -hmm. They're experienced with it. And as you mentioned, their mono-infected results are also outstanding. They, their regimen is 12 weeks and 12 weeks only. It does have ribavirin in it, uh, and, uh, but, but the SVR rates in treatment naive and treatment experience, genotype 1 only, by the way, they're only developing this drug in phase 3 trials, to my knowledge, in genotype 1 patients, uh, have been, were 96% both in both groups, treatment naive or treatment yeah. experience. So, um, Efficacy-wise, outstanding, and tolerability-wise, outstanding in the mono-infected population. Again, they uh, they're going after the HCV/HIV co-infected population, but this drug-drug interaction issue is one that uh, you know still has to be uh, worked out. And you're right; this is a twice-a-day regimen as opposed to the previous regimen that we discussed, which is a once-a-day regimen. Um, and then Bristol Myers, we mentioned too, has. Uh, phase three trials uh, ongoing with their all oral regimen. Uh, as I mentioned before, it has a protease inhibitor, an NS5A inhibitor, uh, which we didn't really, you know, point out, but that's another new class of direct acting antiviral agents. And then their non-nucleoside polymerase inhibitor. And they have data that also is pretty impressive with uh, SVR rates in their earlier trials in the 92% range genotype one. So uh, this may be another option. I'm unaware that uh, this company is looking yet in the co-infected population, unless you have different information. No, I'm not aware of, of, of this enrolling yet for us. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so in summary, it seems that there is great interest out there uh, in the pharmaceutical companies in trying to address the up-to-date unmet medical need of treating the large HCV HIV co-infected patient population and this interest is manifest by many phase three trials which are uh, starting or, or are already underway um, and my understanding of your comments is are, are that as a guy that takes care of a lot of these patients you're very excited about the data that you've mm -hmm. seen and um, and you can comment on it too. Uh, my, again, interpretation would be that uh, the thought is that this is going to be revolutionary, that this is going to be a game changer for patients with HCV, HIV co-infection. Do you have any other final comments about some of the emerging therapies? I think you've summed that up brilliantly. I just have to echo in that voice. This is an astonishing, better than expected, really rarely does that happen, where we're, we're faced with something that's just better than we thought it would be, and sooner, uh, to be able to cure most of our patients. So we're in the midst of a standard of care change. Yeah. And as you said, rarely do you, are you in the midst of it. Standard of care in medicine usually takes a long time to evolve, but in the hepatitis C world, it hasn't taken a long time. Yeah. This ends segment three in the Investigator Insights in HCV, HCV-HIV co-infection, risks, and treatment options. 
I'd like to thank you, Daniel, for being an outstanding discussant and availing us of your extensive experience in the treatment of HCV HIV co-infection. Thank you. You're welcome. Pleasure to be here. This ends segment three, and I would like to thank you for attending.